Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. I am currently standing in my well house and here is my pressure tank. Now these things uh, need to be set to the correct air pressure inside to function correctly. And it's something that you should check like once every six months, but at a minimum once a year. So you'll notice that on the top of most pressure tanks for a well, you will have a little cap that looks something like this. And if you thread that cap off, it'll, uh, reveal what looks like just a simple, you know, a stem that you would put air into your car tire or bike tire with. And this is what we're going to use to check the air pressure in the tank, as well as um, set the correct pressure um, for it. So we're going to go through and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Everything is currently turned on and operating. So right now we can look at our pressure gauge for our well and see that we're at about 45 PSI. So if we were to check the pressure of this tank, it should be pretty much 45 PSI. So let's do that now. Now you can check the pressure with any old uh, pressure gauge, even just one that you use for your tires. I have this little uh, portable inflator. What's nice about it is it has digital readout. And so it gives us a real time uh, pressure reading. So 45 or 46 PSI. So we know that the system has 45 PSI in it, but that actually doesn't tell us anything about how much air is actually in this tank. What we have to do in order to figure that out is drain all the water out of the system. So we're going to turn the breaker off to our well, and then we're going to release the water. And you could do this any place in your house or whatever. In this case, I'm just going to release it right here on the floor because I have a pump here to pump it out. And I'll kind of check in as it drains, watch this pressure drop here, and the pressure will also drop on the uh, tank itself. So we'll start draining this down. You see that pressure is dropping down. Now if this thing is actually set to the right pressure, it'll keep on going down until it hits 28 PSI. There, it's crazy. It just it stops so suddenly. So we're at 27 psi, and we should be at 28. So this thing is really close to perfect. Isn't that interesting? How as soon as it hit that pressure that the tank is supposed to be set at, the water pressure just dropped almost instantly. That's because we were, we reached the full extent of the expansion of this tank. So we hit that 27 PSI. That's how much uh, pressure was in this tank. As soon as we hit that, it had fully depleted its expansion capability. And then the water pressure just dropped right away because we had expelled all the water in the pressure tank. In order to set the pressure of your pressure tank, you need to know what your pressure switch is set to. Now, most people are on either like a 2040 or a 3050 or a 4060, meaning that uh, in my case, I have a 3050. When the pressure gets down to 30 PSI, this switch right here turns on the pump and then it pumps up and up and up until it shuts off at 50. You always want the air pressure inside of your pressure tank to be two PSI less than the cut in pressure. So since my pressure switch is a 3050, it turns on at 30 PSI and shuts off at 50. That means I want the pressure in this tank to be set to 28 PSI, 30 minus two. And as we saw here, our current pressure in this tank is 27 PSI. Now, if after you drained all the water out of your tank, uh, you found that the pressure was abnormally low, like 10 PSI or something, you know that you have some kind of a leak in the tank I mean, but if it's been like five years or something since someone's checked it, you can air it up and keep a close eye on it. But make sure that you have a good pressure tank. And if you think that it might be failing, you should just replace it. Another thing you can do to help prevent damage to your well is just add a second pressure tank. And that will just give you uh, a safety net so that if one of your pressure tanks fails and it loses all of its air pressure, it, the other pressure tank will keep your well from short cycling where it's going to turn on and off and on and off and eventually damage your submersible well pump. You can also check the air pressure with uh, any sort of a tire pressure gauge. So if I put this on here, 
it'll show us that our pressure is right at about 28 psi. So our pressure is pretty much perfect already, but if we wanted to add some air, you can just use a regular old inflator gauge like this one, or just an air chuck that you would fill your tires with normally, and just add air right into the tank, like so. Simple as that. Just replace the cap. Little thing about pressure tanks, when you're looking to buy one, I would just suggest buying the largest one that you can that will practically fit where you need it to be. Basically, the longer the well pump runs per cycle, when the well pump comes on and then shuts off, you want that to be at least a minute long and hopefully longer than that. You just don't want the pump to run in really short cycles. So get the biggest tank you possibly can. So now that we have the tank confirmed to be at the correct pressure, we'll go ahead and turn it back on and watch the pressures come up and see where this thing shuts off at. Check this out, my watch just told me that my well pump came on. That's probably my favorite feature of the Sense Energy Monitor is that you can customize it to give you alerts for specific appliances when they're turned on or if they ran for a certain amount of time. So the way I have it set up with my, uh, with my well pump is that when the pump comes on, it sends me a notification like I just showed you, or if it's been running for longer than 10 minutes, it will also notify me then. So in my mind anyway, if the well has been running for 10 minutes straight, there's a chance that something weird is up. Someone's either running water, or the kids left the garden hose on outside, or there's a big leak somewhere. I'll put a link in the description where you can click on my link uh, that since you're a viewer of mine, you can actually get a discount on the Sense Energy Monitor. So definitely check that out if you're interested in that. It's one of the more practical and uh, useful things that I've invested in as far as technology goes. Being able to keep a close eye on the power usage and what's going on at your house is really worth a lot to me anyway. We're at 45 PSI. We're at about 50, tiny bit under maybe. If you want to learn more about wells, click right over here. I've made a playlist of some useful videos for learning more about how your pressure switch works and submersible pumps and those sorts of things. So that should be useful for you. So check that out. Thanks a ton for watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you found this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.